Hello, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to be a bit of a pundit and look at what I think are predictions for programming language trends in the upcoming year. And to do so, I want to use my new tool that I've been building over the past few weeks in order to track programming language trends. Uh, this tool uses the same data. In fact, I get the data directly from GitHub 2.0, which I've used previously on my channel, only it adds some additional features uh, to make it easier to navigate and manage uh, links and handling of these different languages and different charts. Worth pointing out to begin with that uh, the score we're going to be looking at here is uh, the mean or the average of a few other scores. These are the same metrics that are available on GitHub 2.0, the number of issues, number of pull requests, number of pushes, and number of stars. And by the way, we can click all these and change them in what we're looking at uh, that are available uh, as events during a particular quarter since early 2012 on GitHub. I'm going to go back to the mean score for now. I've chosen to use an average of the other percentages because I'm not sure which of those is actually most meaningful. And I don't want to make some big fancy function of those metrics uh, to get the results I want. So it's just an average of those scores is what I show by default. So here we have our top 10 by these metrics, uh, JavaScript, Python, Java, Go, C++, PHP, TypeScript, C Sharp, Ruby, and C. Uh, we can trim our view just down to the ones we're looking at in question here. Uh, so this is what we might look at as our top 10. Now the interesting thing is what are the interesting predictions to make? Well, JavaScript probably will continue to come down again, I'm guessing. And in part, I believe that's because TypeScript is going up. Anyway, go back to our top 10 here. Let's get rid of JavaScript because it lets us see better what's going on with the rest of the languages. And also some of the other ones that aren't necessarily moving up much at the moment. Uh, that would be Java, sort of flat recently. C is sort of flat recently. Ruby is down from earlier and somewhat flat recently. So, and PHP is also down earlier and somewhat flat recently. These remaining top 10 languages are ones that seem to have an upward trend in recent years by this particular metric. Uh, there are other metrics in the world, clearly, of course, than what we can average out of statistics on GitHub. And clearly out of these, Python is a clear winner. I'd say probably the rise of Python since the mid 2010s is because of the heavy popularity of deep learning. And Python's a place to go for that. If we get rid of Python, we see still upward trends on the others. C++ has also been up since the mid-2010s. I presume that's been the hype around, uh, and deservedly so, around uh, C++ 11, 14, and 17. C Sharp also has been, had a pretty steady growth throughout the past, you know, since early 2012. Let's make both of those go away, though, because I want to show the clear winners here. Over the past uh, decade or so, it's clear that among the popular languages, Go and TypeScript are the ones with the sharpest upward trend and they're consistent about this as well. And so I predict that neither of them has finished growing. Uh, Go is already at number four. I'm guessing Go will overtake Java sometime in the next uh, few years. Could be wrong, but I think it's very possible. I think Go is also in some of the same space as Java, which also inclines that perhaps Go will eventually maybe take market share from Java. We'll see. Um, anyway, uh, going ahead and look at other kinds of stats we have. Uh, here is a look at uh, various uh, functional programming languages and semi-functional programming languages. Notice we have here the rise of Rust, which I find somewhat interesting. It looks like perhaps Rust hasn't been growing a whole lot over the past few years, except at the moment it is at its high watermark, and uh, Scala has been somewhat flat over the past number of years also. It's by this particular metric, Rust has just overtaken Scala. If we look a little bit at uh, where those particular uh, uh, changes are occurring. We notice on issues, Rust is far ahead. On stars, it's even further ahead. On pushes and pull requests, it's behind Scala. So there's a lot of work still being done in Scala, but you might say Rust has a little more excitement and momentum at the moment. And that might translate into continued growth. If we notice, Haskell has been down quite a bit over the decade. And maybe especially since Rust started becoming a thing, it's possible that Rust has stolen some Haskell users. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's not impossible. You notice uh, OCaml has been relatively flat, as has F Sharp. Another thing worth looking at is it's definitely worth sometimes taking out the more popular ones to see the trends on below. So if we get rid of that flatness on F Sharp, it actually like it's been going down as well. Uh, maybe also perhaps due to the popularity of Rust. I can't speak to that for certain, of, it, of course. Uh, other thing to look at here in terms of mobile app development, it used to be that iPhone and iOS were king. 
Uh, now there's a lot more uh, Android as well as iOS that might have contributed to the decline of Objective-C and Swift. See, it's interesting. When uh, Apple said, Swift is the new king, everything's gonna be Swift from now on, we see this rapid rise in popularity of Swift, but it has not really made inroads beyond uh, iOS and Mac development. And we notice that since around the peak of Swift in uh, 2016, uh, Objective-C has continued to drop. Before, it seems like probably Objective-C swapped over to Swift. But since this time, they've both been going down. This is in terms of um, market share percentage. I don't know if the actual number of amount of code being written has gone down, but in terms of market share percentage, both have been going down since 2016. On the other hand, we see Kotlin has been continuing to rise, and that is one of the Google blessed languages now for Android development. If we uh, remove Swift and uh, Objective-C from this plot, we can see a little bit closer here. And Dart came out of nowhere last year. After failing to compete in the JavaScript space, it's recently been rebranded and remarketed as a way to do especially mobile app development. There's a tool called Flutter. One of the things I have in my uh, tool here is the ability to link over to trend uh, GitHub topics, find uh, repositories uh, using this language, or to trending repositories using this language. So for example, if we go look over at Dart here, there's this uh, tool called Flutter. Uh, which Google's been developing that's supposedly a really great, I haven't used it, but supposedly a really great way to develop mobile applications with a lot of uh, great features to make development easy. And it has been very successful during 2019, uh, as we see by this dramatic growth here. Notice it might be leveling off some. My prediction is Dart will continue to grow as well as Kotlin, but it won't be quite so steep in the Dart land uh, during 2020, is my prediction as compared to what it was during 2019. In fact, if you look here at the different things, again, also, we see issues, very high. Stars was growing, but not as much. Pushes was growing. Pull requests, also growing, then not as much. Anyway, again, overall, uh, Dart definitely had a, a bumper year during 2019. We'll see what happens in 2020. Uh, another category that I find interesting is scientific computing. Uh, so, for example, we all know Python is king of, uh, king of scientific computing these days. Uh, and Jupyter Notebook goes along with Python. Now, in terms of the less well-known and less popular languages, we have R for statistics as well as various other mathematical and uh, scientific programming languages that are popular in that domain. MATLAB, Julia, Fortran, Mathematica. Now, as Mathematica mostly is low, but has occasional years in which it's got some attention. Uh, personally, I think Julia is a really cool language, and it seems possibly to be down in recent years, which is sort of sad to me. Maybe something can turn around. Uh, but again, worth noting the context here. Uh, Jupiter, Python, wow, they're killing it. Um, and in fact, interesting here is how popular Jupiter notebooks have become in recent years. This is again a way to, uh, uh, this is a way to do Python inside of an interactive uh, web page environment. And uh, the idea originally comes from Mathematica and elsewhere, uh, but has become very popular in Python recently. And uh, I can expect to continue to see upward growth of Jupiter usage. Because again, I think what's driving Python is the scientific computing and deep learning areas. Uh, now, in terms of fun languages that are less popular, and I say less popular, I mean let's throw JavaScript on here for perspective. Oh, they're all flat compared to JavaScript. Okay. But these things are still very interesting languages to me, and it's curious to see where they've been going. Uh, Vala is not new during this past decade. Uh, but it still has seen some uh, usage. Uh, it's designed primarily for writing applications for the GNOME desktop environment, but can be used elsewhere as well. Pascal, of course, is a mainstay classic since long ago. And if anything, I think it looks like it possibly has a slight upward trend over the past 10 years. I presume that's mostly free Pascal driving that. Uh, Hacks is a great language, which sadly seems to be down in recent years, but it's still in this uh, realm here. Uh, D has also been around for quite a while, possibly down in recent years, which is sad as well. Uh, Ada, another thing that's been around for decades, maybe on an upward growth trend, uh, which is actually I find somewhat interesting. If we see Ada by itself, that is some pretty interesting growth. Anyway, back to these languages we had here. Uh, the ones that are somewhat interesting to me, actually, I'll hide those again. Crystal and Nim, I think, are competing for some of the same space. Crystal is basically a way of saying, let's do Ruby, but let's make it statically typed and run fast. And then there's NIM, which is indentation based. So it sort of feels for like a Python equivalent, but it's really not designed to look like Python at all. But again, is a let's feel friendly and scripting like ish while still being statically typed and running fast. 
and it has a, they also have a number of interesting features of their own, which I'm not going to get into today at all. Uh, personally, even though we don't see it clear here, you know, is this just noise? Are these languages that have few counts to start with, you know, it's hard to say exactly what's noise and what's real. Uh, personally, I think that the growth in NIM over the past year is real. Crystal I followed less well, so I'm less certain about that. I don't know the answer. The reason why I think NIM is somewhat real is if we go and look at uh, various elsewheres, like, so if we look at what are the top posts about NIM to our programming on Reddit over the past year, we see, first of all, NIM 1.0 was released. That probably a bit, of the, a bit of the attention it got. And if you notice, there's a lot of hits, uh, a lot of likes on these, link, on these posts here that we see for NIM. Uh, for Crystal, they have a lot of regular, not exciting posts over the past year. And uh, they've been well received, but perhaps not at the same level of momentum and excitement. Uh, one thing I think we often, often see in Crystal also is everybody saying, when is Windows gonna become a first class citizen? I bet if they announce that, they'll get a boost out of it. Anyway, the other thing interesting about NIM is over here in FOSDEM 2020 at the Minimalistic Experimental and Emerging, Emerging Languages Dev Room, uh, that happened recently, just in February this year. Uh, we see a bunch of interesting languages here of various sorts. Four of these talks were on NIM. Now, I don't know if they accepted everybody who uh, proposed a talk, and if so, uh, if NIM just offered more talks than anybody else, but they had four talks in a row here about interesting topics. NIM on everything from microcontrollers to websites, uh, move semantics in NIM, deterministic memory management, designing an ultra low overhead multi-threading runtime for NIM, async await in NIM. Anyway, these are really cool things happening here in the NIM space. They explore interesting things with language in an ongoing way while still trying to be uh, approachable from a mainstream perspective. I don't know for sure where things are going, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that NIM is actually gonna make additional growth during 2020. I'd love to show things like Odin and Zig and others, but even though uh, GitHub knows how to recognize those as languages, I uh, don't have them in the data right now. Uh, it's possible to have in few events related to those uh, repositories uh, tagged as Odin or Zig. I hope that changes in the future. Uh, I think there's definitely some reason to believe that Zig has some attention. And so I hope to see this in the future in this data set. Uh, now, I've had to make some decisions about how to handle data. This is one uh, where I have not made a decision yet. Uh, so for example, visualbasic.net and visualbasic, it seems to me that GitHub suddenly started distinguishing these two during the last quarter of last year. So prior to that time, they were lumped together under visualbasic. So I can't easily separate out the old statistics. And so I can either just lump them together going forward myself, and they're all just visualbasic, or alternatively, I could just leave them alone and you'll have to make your own inferences. And for now, that's my bias. There's a lot of other decisions that perhaps need made with these languages on my uh, language tool, uh, but I can't say for sure what those are. By the way, in terms of statistics to believe or not believe, uh, this right here, again, let's look where it is in the overall grand scheme of things. Oh, let's look where C is. Oh, let's look where Kotlin is. Hmm. Uh, don't believe everything you see on uh, certain uh, programming language statistic sites. Some are great, some are less great, and some can tell you some things better than others, but again, don't believe everything you see in terms of uh, where they rank these languages. Uh, again, this is related to open source uh, stuff on GitHub, public repositories, but anyway, uh, just Try to put things in perspective here. Anyway, so what are my overall big predictions? I predict Rust goes up. I predict Kotlin goes up. I predict Dart still goes up, but not as much. And of course, Go and TypeScript are going up. Uh, anyway, uh, these statistics come out uh, from GitHub 2.0. They uh, produce them on a quarterly level, which I think is fine. It washes out some of the noise a little bit. And so we should be seeing uh, quarter one of 2020 pretty soon, and we'll see how things go. Uh, hope it's been fun. Links in the description for the video uh, to this new tool. Bye, y'all.